Hey, Christian Sex Ed fam. Welcome back to another episode of my podcast, Christian Sex Ed. In today's episode, I will be discussing a sensitive topic and an often misunderstood topic, and that is masturbation. Now, I know this topic far too well. I struggled to overcome it for 12 long years, which is why I'm excited to explore the reasons why people masturbate, whether it's considered a sin and how to overcome it. And remember, we're going to be covering this topic from a Christian perspective. Let's dive in. First, I want to talk about the percentage of people that masturbate. Now, recently I was reading a report and it said that over 95% of men and 81% of women have masturbated at some point in their lives. That's right. Women masturbate too. I know often we attribute masturbation to men, but women do it as well. Nevertheless, I was curious about how this statistic relates to Christians specifically. So I conducted my own survey of 500 Christians and I asked them if they have masturbated in the last three months. And the results showed that 68% of the Christians that responded said yes, that they have masturbated at some point within the last three months. So yes, Christians and non-Christians masturbate a lot. Now, what are the reasons why Christians and non-Christians and majority of people masturbate? One, I think, which is really obvious, it's to relieve sexual tension. Another survey read that about 59% of the respondents had admitted to using masturbation really as a means to alleviate sexual tension. I think we've all been there before. You have a a sexual tension buildup and to alleviate it, you watch porn and masturbate. So pretty obvious. Another reason was seeking pleasure. This is obvious because it's no secret that people have sexual desires and they crave sexual pleasures. Masturbation is one of the fastest and easiest ways to really satisfy your urges. And the third one, which is stress relief and relaxation. When you engage in sexual activities such as masturbation, what happens in your body is you begin to release these endorphins and these endorphins are known to provide this relaxation. So you have these calming effects that tend to follow an orgasm, which essentially helps people unwind and decompress. The fourth one is coping with emotional pain, trauma, or anxiety. I think we've all been here as well. Sometimes when you're going through something really challenging, whether it's an emotional situation or a mental health struggle, sometimes you may just turn to pleasure as a form of escape. Masturbation tends to offer this temporary relief from like the burdens of stress, anxiety, or emotional pain. And number five, a private expression of sexuality. A lot of people have been here as well. This masturbation really allows people to explore and express their sexuality in a private and controlled setting. When you masturbate by yourself, you're not with anyone else, so you're not running the risk of getting a sexually transmitted disease or getting pregnant or getting someone pregnant, which is why people tend to masturbate by themselves because there are less consequences. I'm not saying there are no consequences, but you don't run the risk of getting an STD, which is obvious. Now that we've explored the reasons why people masturbate, the question always arises, is it considered a sin? Growing up, I always wondered, is masturbation a sin? Because it seemed to be a topic that was never discussed. Now, although the word masturbation is not in the Bible, there is a word that is in the Bible, and that word is lust. And this sinful lust is often present during the act of masturbation. This sinful lust involves the sexual coveting or objectification of someone you're not married to. We see this condemned in Job 31 and 1 and by Jesus in Matthew 5 and 28. Now, if you want to know more about my thoughts on this and how the act of masturbation can be sinful, check out my video. The video is titled, Is It a Sin to Masturbate? Or you can read my book, Christian Sex Ed, where I elaborate on this question much more. Moving on, it's time to discuss how to overcome masturbation from a Christian perspective. First and foremost, you have to acknowledge the problem. Do not be blind here. You need to recognize that this lifestyle of masturbation can and will negatively impact your life, your relationships, and your relationship with God. So you have to accept that it's time to eliminate this behavior. Two, identify and address root causes. I suggest something I wish I would have done is work with a therapist or a counselor, someone who can help you explore their underlying emotional, psychological, or spiritual issues that are contributing to your masturbation habits. Because check this out, once you address the root causes, 
you're going to be able to develop more effective strategies for complete abstinence. Third, identify your triggers. It's very essential that you pinpoint factors that contribute to your desire to masturbate. Maybe it's boredom, stress, loneliness, whatever the case is, you need to understand your triggers because it's going to be crucial for preventing you from future relapses or downfalls. Four, develop coping strategies. You need to collaborate with a therapist so that you can create healthy coping mechanisms to manage your triggers. These things can be exercising, going out with family, having someone to confide in. You can also implement practical steps like removing triggers, setting boundaries, or engaging in any other alternative activity, something that keeps your mind off of masturbating. Number five, exercise often. When you engage in aerobic and strength training exercise, you release endorphins and dopamine, which essentially works together to improve your mood, and it gives you this natural high. I know when I used to struggle with masturbation or pornography, I would try to work out at nighttime so that I could get this natural high because what this regular exercise does is it helps manage your energy levels, it reduces your stress, and essentially diminishes the urge to engage in masturbation. In other words, physical activity is a powerful ally in overcoming masturbation. And while we're on this point, let's discuss how the brain can actually become addicted to certain behaviors through the release of neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine and endorphins. These neurotransmitters create a rewarding sensation that our brains seek to replicate. So what happens is over time, your brain creates these neural pathways that reinforce these behaviors, which make it harder for you ever to break the cycle of masturbation. But when you engage in healthier activities, such as exercise, you can start to create these new neural pathways that promote positive behaviors and gradually replace the older, less desirable pathways. This process ultimately can help you overcome compulsive behaviors like masturbation. Number six, one of the most important things, set goals for yourself. You need to establish specific, measurable goals for completing abstinence from masturbation. Seven, we cannot forget this, but you need to seek spiritual counsel. It's essential to understand that overcoming compulsive behaviors involves spiritual growth. I recommend you seek support from trusted leaders, your pastors, your friends, or mentors. And then what really helped me is I engaged in prayer, worship, reading the scriptures. These things gave me strength, wisdom, and I felt God's grace helped me overcome my struggles with masturbation, pornography, and other sexual sins. So continue to seek God for your freedom. Eight, consider therapy. Consulting a therapist who specializes in sexual addiction or compulsive behavior is so important because they can help you address the deeper emotional or psychological issues that are contributing to your masturbation. And number nine, I want you to celebrate your successes. I know that when you're going through this journey of trying to overcome masturbation, there are so many setbacks, but it's essential that you keep pushing and don't beat yourself down. You need to acknowledge and reward your progresses and successes in abstaining from masturbation. Lastly, there was a moment in my life where I had stopped masturbating, but I almost went back to it. I remember it like it was yesterday, though it was not yesterday, I still remember it vividly. I put lotion on my hands and I went into the shower and I was getting ready to masturbate. I felt sick to my stomach because I knew that the enemy wanted me to give in to this masturbation, but I knew that the Holy Ghost on the inside of me wanted me to stay strong and abstain from masturbation. So while I'm sitting there frozen, in which time felt like it was standing still, I decided in that moment that I was not going to masturbate. So I washed the lotion off of my hands. Wherever you are tonight, today, whatever country, state, wherever you are, I want you to wash the lotions off of your hands. I'm praying for you and I know that you can do it. It is time to overcome masturbation. And if you need any additional help overcoming masturbation, I want you to read Christian Sex Ed. Christian Sex Ed, my book, is available everywhere. And I also want you to check out my Overcoming Pornography Starter Kit.
This, along with Christian sex ed, will help you overcome masturbation, pornography, or any other compulsive habits that you may have. As always, thank you for joining me on today's podcast. I look forward to seeing you next time. Please subscribe and share this with a friend. God bless you.